Hi YouTube family, this is Iris. Today is Tuesday, June 22nd. It is 63 degrees out and I wanted to start over here admiring this black lace elderberry. It's complimentary plants. I know there is a label stick. I have it somewhere else in the garden so I'll tell you when I see it. But this azalea was recently placed here. TLC those guys with some acidic soil um just coffee grounds but adding in a yucca and some sedum we'll see how they like it over here but this little corner just made me smile today so wanted to share it with you we'll start from the front yard we moved that um sunflower who didn't like that elevated space i think because it can dry out easily over there so we'll see how this Christmas cactus likes it. And then the hostas, the astilbe, they're doing pretty good. I'm really excited about those guys coming back in. I do have one perennial that I don't see returning from this space. So I'll have to keep my eyes open. So there's a process called something British. So of course I have to call it something African American, but there's a chop that you do on your sedum in order to help them fill in um, more densely instead of being kind of stringy by the time autumn gets here. So I cut back a few of my sedum and surrounded the bed with it. We'll see if they take or if they don't, no pressure. But the front bed is coming in well. The color this year is leaning on the purple and burgundy. But having just shaved back the burning bushes and then placing the height just so we can enjoy the baskets from the porch and from the yard. Really excited about the way these guys are filling in. Guess who's over there, guys? The Dahlias. So these two were actually planted their root in April or May. I really, I didn't start them in the yard. This is uh, east of uh, the sun. So comes up morning sun here. Let's see how they like it, what kind of blooms we'll have. This is another one of those rounded beds. Really excited about the um, painted fern. And then I wanna say, mm, the name escapes me, but I was so excited. Siberian, I can't remember. So excited to find that, that I bought it tiny. <laughs> and then this is the other portion of the shade garden where I am falling in love with a hosta situation over here. We have some astilbe who also enjoy the shade, but I'm thinking the brown eyed Susan may not stay. I believe that's a brown eyed Susan. It may not stay, but it may also offer some continuous color in this space. We have the painted ferns doing their thing. Oh, praying hands hosta right here. I can't wait till that fills in. So like I said, I have a little bit of a burgundy color scheme here. Just quickly wanted to go over, moved a fifth uh, butterfly bush out of here and have recouped these um, mandevillas from the clearance section at Lowell's. Let's see how they become. They were pretty, pretty, pretty well fried. <laughs> But I got them. Uh, I think in our area, that particular store tried to protect them back in April with early delivery, but they got a cold snap and they went to clearance. So let's see if we can nurse those back. Got rid of the, um, uh, the Euonymus that was here and put another Lowell's clearance plant. We're just 28 days from the garden walk so they have to have a chance to become before the garden walk these miss kim lilacs i recently cut off their blooms and they're presenting more foliage so i'm really excited maybe i'll get a second bloom out of them 
and then these guys are um uh what is the name what is the name hibiscus but i don't think they're hardy so i have to see what these will present the zebra grasses are doing well around the compost and then coming over this way can i tell you guys i am so excited i won't go directly by the air conditioner so you can hear my glee what is that what is that is that not exciting i'm so excited i'm so excited so these are um why are the names escaping me today but you all know that i've been very passionate about our um so we have hydrangeas we have our uh, limelight but these are the mandevilla hydrangeas that every year just gave me beautiful foliage. This is the first year that I've ever gotten blooms. Oh my word, oh my word, I'm so excited. And then the potted plant is doing better. Another lesson I learned out of this situation, we have the drip irrigation going to it. So I thought this will be great these guys are part so this is a lime bright bright ideas lime sweet potato vine but these are part of the crocus family and this is another vine but they didn't like direct sun so they came over to the shaded side they've been doing great being watered by the drip irrigation with amanda villa in the middle looking like she wants to bloom at some point but this pot i filled halfway not a good idea that's all i'm gonna say i want to encourage you to use your soil <laughs> wisely now i did fill it in completely and they're doing much better but i didn't use the same soil i make for the vegetable garden I did use like a top, a bag of topsoil and whatever soil I had from moving plants around, I filled that pot in and, and they're performing much better. We'll start with the potted plants. This one got clogged and everyone got all congested. And then I did a cut back, Persian Shield, that's what it's called, Persian Shield. Then I did a cut back on this because this one was leggy and I thought I could like just put the piece that I cut off in the soil and help it root and it said no but gratefully it did send off some shoots so it will be more full but just keep in mind when you try those ideas of cutting back so this is this is one that I didn't cut back and it's I mean it's a little leggy but on this stem I did cut back and it's sending out more babies on each side. It's supposed to be a technique you can use to thicken up your plants. So do it sparingly until you know the preference. The butterfly bushes are coming in nicely. They should give a nice pop of color. I wanted to show you all one of the, so this sedum, I did not come back, cut back. See how, see how? If only, if only our money grew like weeds grew. Gratefully, the soil is moist. But this six-sided sedum, I don't want weeds growing in there. You're not invited. You're not invited. As much as you can, you try to get them by the root. The root. My hibiscus are coming in. These are hardy hibiscus, that white disco bell I told you guys about. But this is an example of the cutback I told you guys about with the sedum. See how I cut those stems? But if you look, they're sending off children on the side. So they'll be nice and thick in a few weeks. Hopefully by the time the, <laughs> the, uh, garden walk happens can you see the little so they send them out on each side and then they come in thicker 
but this is where the weeping willow is in june this is how this side filled in for june i think i mentioned to you guys that i <laughs> planted these guys in the evening and i had some of the uh uh it's not eureka it's sage some of the sage on this side and then some of the pin cushions on this side so i decided sage on this side with the um eureka eureka <laughs> some of the um hyacinths on this side and then the pin cushions over here with a variety of blooming flowers over here back to those dahlias can i say thank you thank you lord <laughs> they are coming in nicely very very nicely i did put cages around anything that appeared like it'll get top heavy so this is what they look like as these are the ones that um got that frost with the snow and died back but then sent out children these this is a sample of the ones that made it through the snow but i mean wow and then here's another one that made it through the snow again very very happy about those but especially grateful that nature sent out those children so I have 13, 15 dahlias with the two in the front that um, we planted naturally. And the dahlias should give us something floral all summer. I am trying to guide them to staying upright instead of kind of leaning over. And then the peonies are finishing. The lilies are coming in. The shasta daisies are just about they're gonna make a beautiful fresh cut flower arrangement i'm very excited the hanging baskets with the um what are those starts with the p petunias are doing well those are those are this morning's flowers and then so we put that sunflower over here the elephant ears they light, uh, have that solar light in the evenings, very nice. And this sunflower said, hey, put my cousin over here. We like the sun, I think they like it better over here. So that worked out. Hopefully she'll do well in this spot, feeling more love. These, we just started these zinnia from seed back in May. So they got big enough to be placed in a pot here. And then coming into the vegetable garden space. This will be the end of our journey for today. So there's a white butterfly that I'm chasing. I was gonna get a net. My friends were telling me, don't worry about it, just inspect. I think that white butterfly is doing something to my stuff. So yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a battle. It's gonna be a battle, but look over here. Look over here, guys. First time ever. So I see how you fall in love with it. I can see completely how you fall in love with vegetable gardening. It is a labor of love, though. It is a chore consistently. Some lettuces. We did some vertical trellises this way. The drip irrigation saves me a lot. I highly recommend it. And then these are the additional, we have some asparagus, the potatoes are blooming. So I think that we'll be able to harvest them in a month or so after they all bloom, the potato themselves should be ready soon. We have carrots, someone was having funny comments about my corn, but I believe that it'll be okay. <laughs> and then some more uh, asparagus. <clears throat> so these are the azaleas that we moved from the front. And as soon as we re 
potted them, not potted, but replaced them and added some coffee grounds, they really came right back. I think we lost one though. So the reality of gardening is always there. These are the goji berries and some onions for that space. And then our herb garden. And this is the first year of our espalier fruit trees. So not expecting any fruit this year, but um, eager to see them grow into this sculptured. Again, if you think of espalier, think about when you ride out to the country and see grape mines and how the vines are guided along a specific direction in the vineyard. That's the kind of um, training we're gonna do with these fruit trees to keep them at a reasonable height that we don't have to reach to the top of the tree. And then some more blueberry bushes and then some more fruit trees. So it's been exciting guys. It's been, I'm glad we got an early start actually. Here's our herb stand. Started this with the goal of strawberries. Not all of them real receptive to strawberry seeds. So <laughs> added some herbs in here, but it's always hilarious the weeds. And then your eye just gets used to, that's not supposed to be there. But we have some of my favorite herbs. The basil is my favorite, to be honest. And last but not least, a grapevine. Grapevine that I had to call the vendor and say, hey, these aren't, these aren't even getting green. The sticks are looking like they're freezing or something. And they replaced it and sent me some more, so pardon my shadow, but very encouraged by their response to being planted. So hopefully the garden walk will render some encouragement and appreciation. Our community is just doing its thing and hopefully this will shed some light on just how beautiful it is to live in the city. So. All right, guys, have some homework to do. You all have an amazing evening. Take care. Appreciate you all. Bye-bye.